joining today's episode of the Social Talent Show, where we'll be talking about employee engagement via game mechanics with Adina DeMonte, Director of Marketing at Badgeville. My name is Crystal Metz, and I'm the producer of the show, as well as, well as the head of marketing for Upmo, and I'll be your moderator today. If this is your first time joining the show, welcome, and let me introduce it to you briefly. The Social Talent Show is a thought leadership series developed by Upmo and Talent Culture, and it's designed to showcase radical thinkers on topics from talent collaboration to mobility, um, HR, and social talent as well. And we'll be hosting the Social Talent Show once a month um, on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific, um, and we'll showcase a new thought leader every time. You can also watch the videos of the past Social Talent Shows um, on socialtalentshow.com. And we'll introduce today's guest in a minute, but first I wanted to introduce you to our host. First we have Rob Garcia, our VP of Product at Upmo. Rob's a disruptor and innovator from Silicon Valley who has been building e-commerce, financial, and consumer-oriented web and social products for over 12 years. He has a leading voice in the startup community, blogging, tweeting, mentoring, and speaking passionately about disruptive innovation and more recently about social collaboration, career, and talent management. Rob, say hi. Good morning, everyone. This is an exciting topic today because we all talk about gamification being a buzzword, and it's been everywhere. Everyone's talking about it, but I think we're barely scratching the surface. So I'm excited to be here. We're going to really open it up with our guest today and talk about how to make it actually happen with gamification. Great. Thanks, Rob. So we also have Megan M. Bureau, the founder of Talent Culture and T-Chat, uh, which is a popular Twitter conversation about talent culture, future of work, and the intersection of social media recruiting and HR. Attendees are still on hold. Okay. So I was, that's what I was just wondering. What, what do we do then? I mean, I, we should we need to stop recording, first of all. Hello, oh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's episode of the Social Talent Show, where we'll be talking about employee engagement via game mechanics with Adina DeMonte, Director of Marketing at Badgeville. My name is Crystal Metz. I'm the producer of the show, and as well as the head of marketing for Upmo, and I'll be your moderator today. If this is your first time joining the show, let me give you a quick overview. The Social Talent Show is actually a thought leadership series developed by Upmo and Talent Culture, and it's really designed to showcase all the radical thinkers on topics of talent collaboration, talent mobility, HR, and social talent. We'll be hosting the Social Talent Show uh, once a month on Wednesdays from 11 a.m. Pacific time, um, showcasing a new thought leader every time. You can also watch all of the old shows um, on socialtalentshow.com where we have them recorded and posted and see all the upcoming shows as well. So we'll introduce our guest here in a minute, but first I'd like to introduce you to our host. We have Rob Garcia, who's our VP of Product at Upmo. Um, Rob is a disruptor and innovator from Silicon Valley who's been building e-commerce, financial, and consumer-oriented web and social products for over 12 years. He's a leading voice in the startup community blogging, tweeting, and mentoring, um, speaking passionately, passionately about disruptive innovation and more recently about social collaboration and talent management. Rob, can you say hello? Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is a really exciting topic today. We have uh, a buzzword as a title. Oh, my goodness. That's something to uh, be worried about, right? But I think gamification is something that uh, has been uh, gaining a lot of strength in the last uh, year and a half, maybe a couple of years. And uh, we talk about how that actually impacts our enterprises and HR specifically. So really excited about the topic today. Great. Thanks, Rob. So we also have Megan M. Bureau, who's the founder of Talent Culture and T-Chat, the popular Twitter conversation about talent culture, future of work, and the intersection of social media recruiting and HR. Megan is a member of the National Association of Personnel Services and the Society of Human Resources Management and several entrepreneurial organizations as well. You can also see her thoughts quoted on top publications um, such as Money Watch, Glassdoor, Monster, and the HR Pub of Your Choice. And just recently, she is now a regular um, with a weekly article and column on Forbes.com as well. Megan, say hello. Hi, everybody. It's Megan M. Bureau here. I'm delighted to be talking about gamification in the workplace. That's something that I've been interested in for a really long time, and it just really exciting to see um, companies of all sizes adopting this type of platform for employee engagement. So thanks for having me. 
Tweet, tweet. It's nice to see everybody out there. And I will just say one thing. In addition to Teach at World of Work on Twitter, um, Brent Skinner and I have recently launched HR Tech Chat, which is happening every Friday from 1 to 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Twitter. So join us over there as well. Thanks again. By the way, that's a great chat. I've joined it a couple of times, and I'm a fan of, of Brent's work and your work as well. So join that Excellent. chat. If technology. Uh, Megan, congratulations on the um, on the Forbes gig. That's pretty awesome. Thanks so much. I am really excited to be over there. I mean, it's I'm all about reimagining the world of work. So a lot of my writing revolves around uh, employee engagement, recruiting the best talent, how you know companies and leaders can retain their talent, and innovation like gamification in terms of what's what's moving and changing in the workplace and, and how innovation is really, really exciting right now in terms of HR and the recruiting space. So thanks. I'm, I'm happy to be over there. Very cool. All right, cool. So just quickly, a few housekeeping items before we start. All participants are um, now muted throughout the duration of the show. However, we'll be taking questions via the chat feature um, or the Q&A section, um, as well as a live Twitter stream, which is tchat, hashtag tchat or hashtag socialtshow.com. So please use that liberal this morning if you have any questions, comments, or other. Um, the webinar will be recorded, and its slides, video, and podcast will be available to you on socialtalentshow.com tomorrow. So check that out. Um, today the show is planned to be about 30 to 35 minutes, and um, then we'll open it up for questions. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Rob and Megan. Great. So this show today, I just mentioned that I was going to be that I'm very excited about the topic, and specifically because of because of how you know such a buzzword gamification is. What does it really mean, and is it really a game, or is it is it is it something that is really driving business value and results? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. How do specifically about HR? How do we engage and empower employees with gamification? What challenges are companies having with actually? Uh, bringing gamification in-house. By the way, gamification is not a new thing. It's just we're calling it something new uh, or using a phrase for it. But if you think about it, referral programs, right, that's gamification for you. It's trying to basically give people a, a prize or a reward for something that drives results. So we're going to jump into that in a few, uh, in a couple of seconds here. But I just want to uh, introduce our guest today as Adina Dimoni. Is that pronounce your last name correctly? I always, I never do. Adina? All right, we might have lost her for a couple of seconds here. Uh, but let me just continue introducing Adina here. Adina and I uh, have been bumping against each other here in the Valley for the last few years. She's been uh, one of the original, uh, one of the first employees of a company called Batchville, which she will introduce in a couple of uh, minutes as well. And Batchville has been working on on this particular issue, on the issue of uh, gamification within within enterprises. So I'm excited to have her on board. She's been primarily driving marketing uh, in her organization and other uh, in other areas as well. And um, what I like about Adina's background is that she's been or expertise is that she's been doing this for the last. I would say probably three years, and Adina, correct me if I'm wrong, three to four years. And so from the beginning uh, times of when gamification came about, I think she's been working on this, really deploying it at different customers, really seeing the problems that they're trying to solve, and figuring out very creative ways to actually make it happen. So uh, without further ado, I think I'm going to have Adina, if she's still on the phone, jump in. Adina, don't be shy. <laughs> You know what's so neat about Adina, too? She mentioned to me, Rob, that what did she, she was at Badgeville as she is really one of the first employees besides the founding team hired. Huh. So she's been able to really, um, you know, be at that company from the what? ground floor. There she is. I Can think I hear her. I can. Great. Well, I just dialed in. I just uh, logged in from my computer, so I apologize if I'm a little fuzzy. I was on the phone, and it seems like we've been disconnected. So let me try this, and if you are having trouble hearing me, I will dial back in, but I don't want to make anyone uh, wait at this point. So hopefully you can hear me clear. I did. 
Adina, we can hear you very clear, and we're very excited that you find the final two of the technical issues here, and you're, you're here. But we, I, I just gave you the floor. We introduced you. You're amazing in gamification. Go for it. Tell us about it. Perfect. So I did hear everything you just said, and thank you for the floor here. I appreciate it, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. As Rob mentioned, I've been with Badgeville for quite some time from um, pretty much the beginning of the company. And one thing that we've seen is just the rise of interest in gamification. Um, as the other said, gamification is not new. The techniques behind gamification have been around for pretty much as long as humans have been around. It's, it comes down to what actually motivates behavior and what motivates you. So we're not looking at something new. But the opportunity here is that the rise of big data and uh, software across the enterprise has really driven engagement and also provided an opportunity to track and measure and reward those behaviors that are occurring in our everyday experiences, both um, in customer experiences, but also in the employee environment, which we'll talk about today. That's so fantastic. I Great. I'm just I mean, that everyone can hear me clear. I can hear you. World, can you hear? Are we good? Okay, great, great. Thank you so much. So the first slide I have, and this is where I like to start with, is who is your audience? I assume that we have many different types of people on the phone today um, calling into a show on talent management and employee engagement. So there's a wide range of people that you could want to engage, practically any person in any industry can be engaged in driven things using these techniques. So you first, before you even approach gamification, ask yourself, who's my audience? Is it fans of a product? Chances are, um, with this audience, it's not necessarily going to be fans, but you might have a technical community. You might have a research and development focused community. You might have knowledge workers, developers, operations managers, creative employees, etc. So you have a wide range of people you want to drive behavior. And as we'll talk about today, gamification programs for these audience audiences are different. They shouldn't all be the same just because everybody is motivated for different reasons. Let's see That's if fantastic. I can. And I'm just going to jump in and say that um, we had Libby Sartain a few weeks ago, and she was talking about employee branding. And she said that basically every employee should be a fan of the brand, should be excited about the brand and the company. So when you talk about you know who's HR's uh, constituents or who's the audience, obviously the employees, right? But um, almost almost every employee and every person who's like an ambassador to the brand should be engaged in this kind of stuff. So if if you're if you're if you're aiming to engage your employees in a way to produce results for the company, yes. If you're trying to engage people outside the company, right? I mean, I don't see why gamification shouldn't work in that area as well, right? Correct. So one of the great things about gamification is that it makes each person in your company a spokesperson and a fan of the company, or they already are a fan, but it helps promote their engagement and their loyalty to your company, increasing their performance and also increasing your goals if you're trying to drive more awareness of your company for talent uh, acquisition or for retaining employees as well. So I think one of the most pressing, you know, as a practitioner, it's Megan here. I mean, I think one of the most and one of the most pressing questions for leaders of companies and practitioners is, you know, how do how does gamification bring employee engagement? I mean, how is this concept? How are we actually actualizing this from a you know everyday standpoint with employees within a company? Great, I, I definitely agree, and this is something that's great to hear from folks in the field because everybody is experiencing this in different ways. Right. And, uh, although we have many customers in these different spaces, you all have your personal experiences, so it's great to make this more conversational and hear from you what, what you think and how this mm -hmm. relates to what's going on with these slides. So one thing that we always look at is the modern enterprise has a lot of good things going for it. There's been some great um, innovations and collaboration and engagement across these spaces, um, thanks to a lot of wonderful software that's been created and purchased. So there's heavy investment lately in software as a service products from CRM systems to support desk systems to talent management systems, marketing automation systems. There's quite a wide variety of software out there. And many of the software is really good. Um, there's been a lot of research done to have 
all the features you'd ever need to successfully run these programs. But the challenge is always adoption and use of these programs. So you could have a wonderful piece of software that you're investing in, spending quite a lot of money on, but ultimately, how do you get people to use it properly? And that's really the what gamification solves. So when you're looking at employees, you have problems like slow onboarding, records not being updated in, the, in these programs, low collaboration levels despite great software that offers the opportunity to engage and collaborate, no knowledge sharing, open support tickets that sit on the answer for a while, and high employee churn rate. Many more problems that can be answered and, and improved with the gamification. And that last one is the one that we care about a lot here. This team would be talking about high employee churn rate, right? That is just terrible. We see people who are disengaged, who are not excited about what's, going, what's happening in their companies they're, of where they're working, and they don't know how to engage. So I, I'm really hoping the gamification here is, is it, it's, it's, uh, uh, inserts some hope in terms of getting some of those people engaged back into the organization and, and looking for opportunities, looking for ways to contribute to the company as well. So let, let's, let's keep going because I, I have a couple questions in that area, but I'm going to save them for later. Great. So let's go on here. I'm trying to figure out if I do have control of the screen. It looks like I might not. So if you guys can just go to that next slide for me, that would be great. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. So we've just been talking about why lack of engagement hurts. Um, employees underperform and underutilize the technology. So I don't really need to hone in on this too much more, but I think everyone understands and everyone's here because they want to find out how gamification can help uh, achieve these goals. You also have the customer side, and some of you might have a uh, customer angle as well. So in that case, I can talk a little bit more around the customer programs. We certainly do a lot that are customer facing, but the employee side is the fastest growing. So going into what is gamification, um, there's a lot of different ideas and concepts around this word. It's a funny word. A lot of people don't like it. I personally don't love the word. I think it uh, tends to get in the way of a strategy that works really well. So we like to think of gamification as a business strategy which applies behavior motivating techniques from social gaming to non-gaming digital environments. Go ahead to the next slide here. Let's see, I think I'm... So when it comes to employee-facing gamification, there are some areas where it obviously fits, and then there's other areas where people look at me with a surprise face. So I like to show the wide range of use cases which can be um, used with gamification that can actually be increased uh, performance and productivity and efficiency within all of these systems. So online communities is a very popular area. Of course, there are many wonderful online community platforms out there. But increasing engagement within these online communities and ultimately having your employees become promoters for your organization and helping answer questions from other employees and also from the public is something that's really important to a lot of organizations. Within talent management itself, having online communities is a place where people can come and research the organization, ask questions, find out who's behind the organization. This is an opportunity for you to get people to actually engage with those platforms, helping making your job easier if you are in a talent management position. Collaboration applications, very similar story, but a lot of these might be internal facing. You want to get people to engage with them. CRM systems, I have recently seen Salesforce is heavily promoting their own uh, gamification programs where they say four times the amount uh, of people who are marked as challengers are, uh, sell four times the amount of deals. So this is something that we're seeing a lot in sales. It's a natural fit for a sales platform um, because salespeople tend to be competitive. But not all gamification programs need to be competitive, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Training and certification is another area where gamification is having heavy impact. Help desk and support systems, very similar to the sales system, where you're trying to have your team compete to be the number one answerer within those support programs. IT and product management, talent ma management, of course, with the, the team here. We have a lot of folks in that area. And general enterprise software, this is pretty much being adopted across every platform, whether that be supply chain management to other enterprise systems that are very traditional legacy systems but have been updated 
to modern programs and trying to get people to be engaged with them. So go ahead, next slide. Interesting saying it could be applied to any, any area. I mean, what, what areas, so let's ask the question the other way. What areas okay. of the company can gamification not be, should not be applied to? Sure, so I think there's always areas where there are certain types of gamification that shouldn't be applied, so you wouldn't necessarily want to create a competitive program for all of your employees. Some of them would be turned off by that within sales and within support. It's a natural fit there, but you can still create programs that highlight expertise or completion of programs. So I don't think there's any place where it shouldn't necessarily be applied. It's just a matter of how you choose to apply it because it can go very wrong if you use the wrong system, the wrong programs, and the wrong rewards. I mean, if we look at statistics, folks, they're saying something in the range of 70 to 75 percent of American workers are not engaged or actively disengaged in their work. I mean, that's staggering. That's staggering. And in terms of applications for gamification, in my world over here, I mean, I see it a lot with, obviously, recruitment, talent management, and also health and wellness, which is not something I heard brought up, but, you know, actually rewarding employees for going to the gym, and yeah, certainly on the training side. Certainly. So the health and wellness space, I didn't bring that up, and that's a great a great point because that actually is something that we're doing a lot of work with employee-facing programs as well as uh, customer-facing, public-facing programs. So for instance, we're working with uh, Kaiser Sozivia Health and they have a whole uh, suite of corporate training programs for health and we're engaged with that through gamification. So the health and wellness space is huge for gamification and especially will be growing internally to help surface people who are staying healthy in your company, and that's something that's really important for everyone. So I'm really excited about that use case as well. Excellent. And as I always say in terms of new innovation for, um, you know, more global adoption, you really do need case studies, and that's exactly what Badgeville has, has, has been able to deliver. And, and by the way, congratulations on the Series uh, C funding. Thank you. you guys have been able to, you know, deliver um, a client base and case studies, and that is, is so key to growth. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the reasons we've been able to raise our Series C within 20 months of our launch is that there's a real need for this out there, as we talk today about all of the things that are going unmet within these great uh, software systems. There's a need to drive behavior, and there's nothing that does it as well as gamification and these technologies that we like to think of that fall under a larger behavior management umbrella. So it's something that you're going to see more and more of. You have researchers that say 70% of global 2000 organizations are going to be have a gamified experience by 2015. These are things that are, are not just the research, big research organizations saying. These are things that we're seeing from an amount of interest and also the deals that we're closing and, and the customers that we're helping reach their goals. So I did want to show one example uh, from Upmo, not to, to promote the, the folks here that are, that are so graciously offering to let me speak to, to the audience. But I do think that Upmo is doing some really innovative things within gamification. Um, and this is an example of their system where I think Rob can probably speak to it a little better than I can. But I do think the whole concept around driving engagement within a talent system, helping identify people with skills within the community and helping keep them as employees instead of losing them to other companies, something that's really important. And it creates a very social experience as well. So Rob, if you want to quickly touch on this and, and what we're seeing here, that would be great. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on pretty quickly, but this is just a very simple gamification uh, little uh, trick here, which just shows a, a, um, a, a leaderboard of all the people who are doing what, what the company wants them to do, which is to showcase hack the skills they'll be using when they're doing work and broadcast those skills so that when people can are looking for specific uh, you know, competencies or, or areas that they need uh, talent for, they can find them pretty easily. So I notice here that Mary, our, our Twitter uh, in, in command right here, right here right now, has uh, been uh, tagging skills like math, so she bit me to it this month. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do next month, which I think is what you're trying to say, right? It, it, really, it, it actually um, encourages the right behavior, in this case, is to actually get people to tag the skills and keep track of what they're working on. Is that correct? Exactly. And a lot of times, you know, people say the word gamification is 
leaves them feeling dirty? Are we trying to manipulate people? Are we doing this as an evil thing? And honestly, gamification doesn't work if people don't want to do something. It's not a program that's designed to convince people to do what they're not naturally inclined to do. It is something that helps people remember and guide them to do things that they would already do or want to do and help surface their expertise and give them rewards for doing that. So I think this is a great example of how within enterprises you can use software like Upmo to drive engagement and keep your employees happy and surface the people that have skills that are really valuable to your organization that otherwise would go unnoticed. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that the name gamification actually uh, does a disservice to the space? I think I, I just saw a tweet with somebody saying, you know, it takes away from, from the strategic nature of, of what it actually accomplishes. Yeah, I mean, I have mixed feelings on it. Honestly, I think any buzzword uh, or term can definitely hurt and help at the same time. If we didn't have the word gamification, I don't know what we would be calling the space. I think at this point, gamification is something that people remember and it gets noticed. And we do have people coming to us saying we want gamification. But over the long term, I think this, again, is going to be under a larger umbrella of behavior management, where we're looking at things that are not only about gamification, but also about reputation and social mechanics and how these all fit together in a larger story of using these techniques to drive behavior. So we'll see where that levels out, but I think it's good that we do have a name because it's important to have this within these communities. So this slide here is highlights all the different org programs that you have in an enterprise. And I've already touched on this a bit, so I won't spend too much time talking about this, but I do think it's important to just, I always feel overwhelmed looking at this slide, and I know what it's like to be in a big organization. I've worked for large organizations as well, and there's always so many different places for you to interact with that organization, and you don't know what to do even as an employee. So how, how do you know if, you, if it's more important for you to be engaging with the online community, or the CRM system, or the marketing analytics tools, you want to be able to encourage your employees to engage with all these tools. So a lot of these individual tools and communities, such as Upmo, as we just saw, are starting to add gamification features and driving engagement through those programs. Once that's done, though, there's an opportunity to have an even greater impact across all of these uh, systems within your enterprise by connecting them with portable reputation. So that's one of the unique things that we do at Badgeville and why a lot of our customers like EMC, CA Technologies, VMware, and others come to us is because they have so many different programs within their enterprise, but they want to be able to connect these programs and have a reputation for each user within those communities so that they can drive behavior across all of them. So go ahead to the next slide. So I talked a little bit before about how you have to really focus on what type of behavior will drive your community. And in some audiences, people want to be winners. Um, I'm not personally driven by competition as much as I am driven by expertise. I want to be known as an expert in my field and also in areas that I'm interested in. So that can be a behavior motivated behavior motivator. There's also people who want to be known as helpers. They want to collaborate and help other people within that community. So then you can reward that or being a fan as well. So there's a lot of opportunities here to drive behavior, not just through competition, but through these other mechanics. You touch at the end something really, really important. This is the problem of recognition. And this is something that HR uh, practitioner, practitioners have had a, a really tough time with because from a compliance point of view, they have to do performance reviews, right? Every company, it's compliance, we gotta do it every six months or every year, but that's not really the place to recognize people, right? We all know this, right? You start with a conversation, and the conversation always goes like this. You're awesome because you accomplished this, this, and this, and this, but here are some of the areas that you need to work on. I mean, okay, thank you for the five seconds of, of glory there, right? <laughs> right. So, um, isn't this a perfect area for, for gamification to jump, to, to really help HR practitioners to, to really make uh, the company more about celebrating uh, the right behavior, celebrating the right things, and not just HR celebrating them, but everyone celebrating with each other, giving props to each other, showcasing what they're working on, you know, basically elevating every, every employee in the company. Because at the end of the day, not everyone can be a top performer, but everyone can be a great uh, performer for the company. Is that, is that too much to ask? 
No, I think that's exactly what we should ask. And being having experience being in a big company, you do feel like this lost pond in this, or this lost fish in this large ocean, and you have the high-level executives. But how do the other employees come up through that organization and become known? I apologize for the noise in the background here. Again, I uh, am dialed in on my computer in, in a slightly loud uh, area, so I apologize. But hopefully you can all still hear me. Um, but what I was saying is that it is important to be able to give people an opportunity to be seen. And I agree, there's so many times when you get one high five and you get your employee of the month and then never to be seen again, that recognition. And recognition is within the enterprise and within business is a extremely strong motivator. There's a lot of studies that say, you know, people don't stay with at their job just because of money. It really, in the long run, becomes about recognition, about being able to build their brand within and, make, and feel good about themselves, feel good about what they know, and feel good about how they can help other people and help the organization. So here I'm showing some gamification frameworks. We recently launched our frameworks. We have many different frameworks that cover different angles that companies would want to take within their organization. So we have programs that help you, your users discover information. And this is something that you don't have to complete within a set order and a set time frame. But this gives you a mission to help drive you to different experiences. You also have programs that help share. These are popular in online communities and collaborative experiences where they actually are highlighting expertise in different topics based on the types of information that you're interacting with, quizzes you've completed, and answers that you've provided. But you also have programs that help train your employees. So these are actually similar to the Discover missions, but these are step-by-step process-oriented missions that would be seen in more of a training program or onboarding program to help you uh, understand and engage with that community and experience. And then, of course, we have the competitive programs for experiences where there are still many experience, experiences where behavior can be driven through competition. I think, you know, this is such interesting information, um, and I think it's a good backdrop, but I, I can't help as a practitioner and a leader to, to listen to all this and go, this is great, but I think what we want to hear more of is a couple of case studies in terms of clients you've brought on board, what their issues they were having, and how your product and how this idea of gamification has actually helped them engage employees or create these wellness plans, et cetera. Um, because I know that there's a whole slew of leaders out there, and I've, I speak to them in my consulting practice, it's like gamification, I mean, they're not even on social media. They're not even tweeting or using Facebook. So how have you dealt with some of the objections to even not only the name gamification and that concept, but leaders and companies who are making decisions on products and solutions, how do you overcome their no's or their wow, this just seems foreign and weird to me. Yeah, you Would know, you be able to provide us with some case studies or examples of that? Yeah, I have a couple of case studies coming up and I want to make sure that I, I get to the, the visuals on those. But I think overall awesome. people are realizing it and VP level, C level executives are realizing that driving behavior is not just going to happen by doing nothing, and they need something that's sustainable and also scalable to reward a large organization. So these programs are, whether they're called gamification or something else, they are mm -hmm. being, and being successful. So I'll talk in a little bit about what EMC did and how they don't actually use the term gamification, but they have a different term that they use internally to drive okay. the engagement. Very know. interesting. Thanks. Looking forward to seeing those examples, and just for people who are listening and on Twitter, please throw your questions out there. We're going to be uh, lining them up right here uh, as we go through uh, through the use cases as well, and uh, we'll jump into those as soon as we uh, we're done with the slides here. So just remember to tweet, tweet, tweet. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you know, it's a great question because one one of the things you're saying is. What if people don't engage with social media, these employees? What if it's hard enough to get them to, to tweet or to do something? Why are they going to be engaged with a program in your own applications that's social and engaging and rewarding? Well, I think it, it's actually more likely that these people are going to engage with those systems because they're already in those systems. And they're seeing those experiences every day. So when you can start calling out within a CRM system, that somebody else just passed you in their total number of points for the month, or they've closed more, more deals in this area, they've even helped answer questions within the community. 
these people are going to engage more. So this chart here really talks about how the value of these virtual rewards, if you want to call it gamification, or just virtual rewards, or icons of expertise, they're much more valuable when the audience can see each other, when you're in a social experience. So if there's no social experience, if it's all just one person engaging with a software application, then likely you're going to need to add some sort of tangible reward for that employee. But ultimately, you have a lot of opportunity to add this social program to increase collaboration and engagement using rewards that really don't cost anything to the company. You can also offer privileges to people who achieve status as well. So these can be low cost or no cost to the company, but they can still have real, true, tangible value to the audience as well to drive behavior. So let's jump into some case studies. I think I have those coming up next. I have one more here just talking about how important it is to make things social, but I'm going to jump into the customer case stories. I find that to just be the most fascinating part for for so many reasons, and one is just the you know the, the rate that leaders are adopting to social media is, is is it's it's growing, but it's not growing in the numbers that I think we thought it would be last year. So yeah, it's just really fascinating to see you know how how you overcome that. Yeah, exactly, and I think social media and social mechanics are going to be thought about at a much broader level going forward. They're not going right. to be thought about as just Facebook or Twitter, but they're actual real-time engaging experiences that happen within every online experience we have, whether that be behind the firewall or in front of it. So quickly, I'm going to go through some case studies here and then hopefully leave time for some questions. Um, but the first one I wanted to bring up is Samsung, and they are a customer-facing example, but I like showing this because I think they do such a wonderful job with their customer-facing program. They launched a program called Samsung Nation um, quite a while ago now, and they're seeing great success with this program. And the program is really designed to harness customers online, um, encourage more user-generated content and social sharing. For Samsung, their, their goal is to help people remain loyal to the brand and remember the brand between their big electronics purchases. We can go to the next slide here and see that they've, oops, can I go back here? There we go. So they launched a program called Samsung Nation, and you can go to samsung.com right now and sign up for that program. And here's a, a really fun program for consumers who come and want to earn points for doing things like registering products, providing answers in the Q&A forums, submitting comments and reviews, watching videos, liking things on, uh, for Facebook, sharing on Twitter, and much more. So you have these people who are coming, and they likely would have come to the site anyway and maybe looked around. But all of a sudden, you're providing them information on what you would like them to do. You're not forcing them to do it, but you're providing these fun little rewards and incentives along the way. So you see here that this is a leaderboard of people who are really heavily engaged with the program. But there are thousands and thousands of people who are engaged with this program coming and earning points and starting to be more social in the community. So it's been a huge success for them. But let's talk about employee-facing programs, since that's what we're here to talk about today. So EMC um, is a great customer of ours, a really large uh, Fortune 1000 company. And they have a lot of these different software experiences internally. So as we talked about before, you've had the different communities. And they're looking at creating a program that goes across all of these experiences. So they recently launched a program at EMC World, which is their large um, user conference each year, which was in Las Vegas last month. And they launched this program there, where they were actually creating missions at the real-time event that they had people go through these different experiences, live experiences, visit different booths, and engage with content. And then that experience was ported over to their community that's built on Drive Software, where we're also integrated. So here you have the ongoing experience of reputation, where I think this is really cool, because you're not just having a reputation for doing things within one area of that brand's digital touch point, but you're actually getting rewarded for your engagement across all of these experiences. So they've seen great success with this program already. Unfortunately, I can't talk about specific numbers quite yet, but we are seeing extremely high uh, response rate and en engagement within these communities. And these numbers are really what are speaking to the VP level and C-level executives who are saying, who cares about the word gamification? We really want this because it works. And 
I said before, EMC doesn't call this gamification. They call it the RAMP program, Reputation um, Awards and Motivators program. So they don't like the word gamification. That's, that's fine by us and fine by me. But they understand that it's really about reputation and the status in the community and how to drive behavior. So another company doing a very similar program is CA Technologies, another large uh, company. Jump back. There we go. And they have a program called CA Champions that they recently launched within their online community, also looking for ways to expand that within their organization. And here they're rewarding things for commenting on blogs, reading blogs, spanning pages in the message boards, becoming a networker and helping connect to other users on MyCA, becoming an expert across different message boards. You see all the things here that they're rewarding. And these are just a few of the things that they're starting to reward, but they're going to be adding more and more to this program going forward. And I think this is a great example of how to use gamification with an online community. So quickly, I'll show Deloitte. I think it's my final case study here. Deloitte is one of our customers and also a company that is extremely innovative and social for both its client base but also its own employees. So they're doing a few things with us. One program is called Leadership Academy, which is a training program for senior executives around the world. And this program brings in videos from top business schools, Harvard Business Schools and Business School and others, to help people become better leaders. So this program is rewarding people for completing the program, and it actually goes through a complete certification process where they can earn rewards and see who else is participating in the program. So that's been very successful thus far. They also have a program called Who, What, Where, which I think is a really exciting application and shows the future of what work is going to be about as people become more mobile and work around the globe, especially in the case of Deloitte where they have consultants all over. They really wanted to connect people and help them collaborate by surfacing expertise. So kind of brings us back to that idea in the Upmo example where it's talking about skills. You have all these people in your company, but how do you get them to first tell you their skills or highlight their, their skills and their expertise and then connect them with each other so that they can help each other out and ultimately make your company more effective and more productive. So this program, Who, What, Where, is basically a geolocation app built, a proprietary application built for Deloitte. So our product is hooked into that and they are rewarding employees for checking in where they are and also surfacing their expertise. So they can then go ahead and connect those employees when they're on the go wherever they are with other people nearby who can help them with problems they're having based on their expertise. So again, a very innovative program coming from Deloitte. And I think it's great that what they do here is not only do that within this mobile app, but the last, last slide here before questions. Um, they share this into Yammer. So if you know Yammer, they're the largest enterprise social network. We have a partnership with them, really great innovative company. Um, but here they are sharing their rewards that they're earning on that mobile application into Yammer where all of their employees are seeing this, which ultimately is driving adoption of the mobile application. So you see how this quickly becomes a chain effect to promote new programs as well within the organization that you want people to complete and use. So I'm kind of blasted through these examples because I know we're running out of time, but I'm happy to answer questions on any of them or talk about other use cases as well. I mentioned the, um, at the beginning, these are great examples, by the way, but I noticed there's a lot of consumer, customer stuff related there. I mean, community, fantastic. I love that. But we, I go back to what we're here, which is to address HR uh, needs, right? They're trying to figure out how to actually utilize gamification to engage employees. Uh, I noticed that you have a couple of examples there in, in, in trying to promote uh, sharing of knowledge within organizations. Fantastic. We mentioned health. There's a company called Kia that does this as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about, um, let's pick an example, something that, that, that uh, works for HR, right? Employee referral programs. I mentioned that at the beginning. How do you think they can use all these uh, you know, tests that you've given us, all these game mechanics to actually make referral programs work uh, better than the way it works today? I mean, if you look at it, you know what the problems are, right? You put a, a big uh, a carrot in front of them and say, I'll give you 5000 bucks or 2000 bucks or an iPad if you refer a friend to take one of uh, the jobs that we have open. And some people take it. Actually, it has been one of the most successful programs coming out of HR. But 
still a lot of people are sitting on the sidelines. How do we make it more successful using their education and giving capital? Sure. So I think one of the, I mean, there's a lot of issues with those programs that I can speak to personally um, just by knowing how they work, but you have the reward for the one person who gets that person through to actually be hired in the organization, but there's a whole lot of steps that happen before that person gets hired, and maybe that person's referring people that are actually highly qualified, but they don't ultimately get the job, and that whole game mechanic setup is, becomes very negative to the employee who's trying to contribute and help people get hired. So not to say that everybody who the employee sends over is going to be valuable and worthy of referrals, but what if you set up a program where the employee got a reward depending on how far that um, direct referral goes within the interview process. So if they get in for an interview, maybe you want to reward that employee for submitting them, even if they don't ultimately become the right fit for the organization. And creating these multi-step okay. programs, I think, really helps the organization drive the behavior you want, and you know, really you want to focus on moving the negative feedback for the positive behaviors that you want to drive and including positive feedback that's affordable, scalable for your organization. And you can do that also through surfacing this in your community. So you can call, you know, Rob, you're the number one referrer of the month. And maybe that gets you something even if nobody actually gets hired. So I think that's one way that within the talent community and referral community that can be used um, quite well. So you, a couple of tips that, that you gave uh, HR. One is to lower the uh, the, the achievement uh, level, right? So in, instead of being a person hired, it could be the person referred, right? And then the other thing that you mentioned there is is raising the visibility of the program by you know giving out prizes to the person, you know, almost like a leaderboard every month, the person who's been doing the, the best job, uh, kind of thing, right? Correct, and also just being able to surface that within your program. So if you have a Upmo community, or even if you have an internal, say you have Yammer as a um, your network for your employees, be able to actually surface people who have referred the most people that month, or who have referred the most people that have gotten to the highest level, you know, that month, or who gotten even if you want to say people who have gotten accepted into the first interview process, then that can help really motivate that behavior because you're creating a whole culture of people who know they're being rewarded not just for something that's out of their control, but for things that are actually in their control to some extent. I have awesome. to say, as, as somebody who has spent most of my career consulting on the recruiting or talent management side, I mean, I, I, I don't know how many years I've been talking about people hire people, right? We, we hire the right fit based not only on somebody's resume, but personality and culture fit. So I'm delighted to hear you say something regarding fit and how that's going to be addressed via, you know, gamification and, and, uh, and online games in which potential job seekers can actually acquaint themselves not only with the specific company in the industry, but what about the role itself? What about, you know, let's try on, you know, and bring somebody through sort of a virtual program of this is what it's like to actually be in this company in this actual role, because I think that's what recruiters really struggle with is, how can I, in a short amount of time, ensure that a job seeker has as much information as they possibly can for this client to, to go into this company and know what they're getting themselves into? Well, I think that's a great point. You know, another opportunity that you have with gamification from the actual person coming to the site looking to find out more information is you can create missions for them that drive them through different uh, steps and content on your site to help them understand more about your company and the culture. So a lot of times, you know, if you're looking for a job, you might go and look at the jobs that are available. You might quickly click on a culture page. Maybe you're not going to watch that full culture video. Maybe you're not going to read the stories about employees. But if you want people to do that, you could say, if you get through these 10 steps and submit your resume, we'll guarantee that we call you back. You know, what sort of reward can you give them that's going to be something that won't cost your organization anything, but ultimately show that they actually care and want so far, an amazing show. I wanted to thank everyone who's been in, uh, who's stuck around for the whole almost the whole hour because um, uh, it's been a really interesting show. Adina, if you're back, we have one more question for you. If not, we can wrap it up. Sure, I'm still here, so we can go with one more question. Oh, you're here. Oh, excellent. So we have a question actually from from the UK. Somebody's tweeting and, and asking if that example of the Deloitte that you gave the Deloitte uh, example, if that's available to every employee and. Uh, on top of that, there's a follow-up question uh, related to it, which is, 
is gamification creating potentially another problem, which is a little bit of a internal social or internal gamification divide? And what, what, what I mean by that is, you know, now that you have gamification programs within the company, people who jump on it love it. They're excited about it. But there's a lot of people who go, you know what? Eh, I don't like this stuff. I don't, I don't want to do this. This is, this is not interesting to me. This is, this is all playful and, and childish, right? Uh, does that create a divide in the company and, and actually uh, create a, another problem? Sure. So I'll quickly answer the Deloitte question and move on to that. So Deloitte is currently being de deployed um, with their Deloitte Digital um, community, which is based out of Australia, but they're looking at ways to roll that out um, across more of Deloitte, and we have other opportunities with them as well. They're just extremely innovative in the space uh, around gamification, and so as well. So look for some exciting things coming from Deloitte. And then in terms of the, the divide, you know, I think it's it can happen if you're not careful of how you position this. If you're going to have it as a gamification program that you, if you don't connect it to the things that people are already doing somewhat on a daily basis, and you have it sitting on the sidelines, then yes, you're going to create that divide. But if it's connected to what your employees are doing already and you're just surfacing expertise, you're not really going to create that divide because it's tied into the programs that they're already using. You're just encouraging them to use them more and use them better and be more productive. So we see this across the board that it can be used successfully if you're smart about it, but you just have to be very careful because it can go wrong if you start deploying gamification without the expertise needed to, to create these systems that actually drive behavior and don't create that divide. Do we have any other questions out in the, um, the Twitter sphere? That was uh, a really good one. one. We, we have one more. Uh, what are the three areas, and I think I tweeted this earlier as well as you were talking, but what are, what are the three areas that HR can focus on that are kind of the low-hanging fruit for, uh, for gamification? And, I, and it, I'll tell you the ones that I tweeted earlier as you were speaking, and then you tell me if you, if you agree or disagree and why. But I, I thought employee engagement, obviously, uh, it's the key problem. So how do we solve that? I think employee referral programs could be one of them, you know, getting people excited about bringing people in the company. Uh, the second one is talent uh, broadcasting or talent management. Now, I don't want to use talent management because it's a big word, but right. uh, help letting people share about the skills they have and, and sign up for projects and, and connect with other people. And the third would be health, right? Uh, we talked about health programs. Are those the ones that you would agree with as well or, or any, any other low-hanging fruit? Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. I, I think that really is a good summary of what we've talked about today. And there's, you know, certainly other areas where, you know, edu we talked a little bit about education. I know you mentioned that the training, the expertise is a key piece. I love adding in the health programs because that is so important to HR. And then the uh, just surfacing the employees who are actually helping re refer other employees to your program and providing those positive motivators for doing that. So, yeah, I think that's a great summary. Thanks so much for um, helping put that five answers together because that's pretty much what I would have said. See, I'm, I'm listening, Anina. I've been listening to you. This is awesome. <laughs> it's I'm a miracle. Teasing. No, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing my partner over there. He's too much fun. Great. Thank you so much, Adina, for being a guest today. This was a fantastic program. It went like 10 minutes uh, more than, uh, than normal, but we really enjoyed the topic. We're going to put it up for people who were not uh, able to join on the phone at live today. So we're going to put it up on our blog. We're also going to put it up in, uh, on, our, uh, on our website. But I'll let uh, Crystal kind of finish up here for us. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, guys. We had such a great time. Thank you, Adina. Thank you, Rob and Megan. So as Rob uh, pointed out, we will have this happen tomorrow on socialtalentshow.com. Um, you can also um, send any more questions that you might have to um, hashtag pchat or hashtag socialtshow.com or email info.mo.com. You'll see that we have our next show on July 25th with Greta Roberts um, talking about big data and how to optimize your investments in some of those legacy HR platforms that a lot of organizations have. So please join us then, and uh, we look forward to chatting at that time. So have a great day, and thanks again to our speakers. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your day. It's been a great topic. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nina.